Hi, Dr. Robert Selig, and today we're talking about the seasonal flu. And it's really not seasonal. We tend to get the flu more often in the winter months because we're not outside breathing fresh air. We're not touching the earth. We're not getting the sunshine and the vitamin D. So we're indoors. We're more prone to the virus attacking us. And so today I want to really talk about the virus and the flu and how to A, not get sick, the old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And what do we do when we do get the flu? So there is that window of opportunity that we need to discuss on how we can really abort the flu once we feel those symptoms creeping into our body, whether it's the bone aches or that little scratch in the throat or the, you know, the muscular aches or the digestive upset. So as soon as the symptoms hit, we do have that window of opportunity to do something about it so we can get rid of it one, two, three. So we need to understand a deeper, a deeper understanding of what viruses are. And just understanding there's more viruses on earth than stars in the universe. So we're not going to wipe out viruses. What we have to do is strengthen our terrain and have a stronger immune system so we can be prepared to ward off those invaders when they do attack us. Um, let's look at that bad boy. This is a virus. So when this virus, this is a cell in your respiratory system, when that virus lands on the cell membrane. This cell membrane is a, it's a fat sandwich. It's a lipid bilayer. So understanding that the first line of defense really is our cell membrane. So when the virus hits the cell membrane and we have resiliency in the cell membrane because we have the proper essential fatty acids. Those essential fatty acids, those are your omega-3s, your omega-6s, your omega-9s in the right proportion. And it's also the DHA, that's your fish oils, your algae oils, it's the EPAs, the ALAs. So understanding the importance of the fatty acids for the integrity of your cell membrane. So what happens when that virus actually sinks its teeth into the cell membrane? that starts off a process if this virus does get in through the cell membrane. And this is, this is really how a virus works. The virus sinks its teeth into the cell membrane, and if the cell membrane, again, if the integrity is weak, the virus gets in, and the virus is gonna send its viral RNA invades the cell, and it's going to change the DNA into the virus RNA. And if this virus RNA will start to replicate and it takes over the cell, and as it takes over the cell, it's ev eventually going to cause the cell to die. And when the cell dies, it's going to explode all of its particles and cellular debris. And this is what we call the symptom. Now, if it's in the gastrointestinal area, that's where the symptom will be. If it's in the muscle or the bone, or if it's in the respiratory system, that's where you present with the symptom. So it's this accelerated cell death that causes the symptom because that's gonna set off a cascade of events that we call the immune response. So what happens in that immune response? It's gonna trigger an army of cells to combat the invader. And so the leukocytes, the plasma cells, the macrophages, the mast cells, the B cells, the T cells, all these things are going on when we have an invader. And so we, our body has to deal with this because these are all pro-inflammatory. And so we have to understand how we're gonna get this stuff out of the body because how quickly we get this dead cell material out of the body is how quickly we heal. And again, this picture is showing that cascade of events of all the, the cells of our immune system. And our immune system, where all those cells are made, it's having a thymus, your tonsils, adenoids, the spleen, the lymph glands, and the bone marrow. So some people may have had their tonsils and adenoids removed or their spleen removed or, you know, one of the immune organs removed, which will keep you compromised. Um, so what is our body going to do when we're invaded? So it really depends on the 
how many immune cells you have, but more importantly, the aggressivity of your immune cells. Are your immune cells on vacation sitting around smoking cigars or are they ready to do their job and clean up the debris? And so we want to have really aggressive immune cells because that's one of the keys to combating um, this viral infection. And so what's also important when we do have an infection is making sure to, to accelerate the healing that we got to keep the portals of elimination open. That's, you know, the, the biliary system, the liver and the gallbladder have to move the bile out. Uh, the kidneys have to filter all the junk out. The lymphatic system is moving all the debris out and the large intestine. Hopefully we're really um, not allowing ourselves to get constipated when we get sick because that's how all this stuff is coming out. So we have to understand the organs of elimination and we have to understand what is going to make our immune uh, cells aggressive. Um, so when we do get the flu, I talked about we have that window of opportunity and that window of opportunity really is, it's about, again, as soon as you feel that scratch in your throat, you put everything on hold and you pay attention to that scratch and you can get it right there and then. And so we're going to go through some simple strategies that everyone should employ. And the very first thing is vitamin C. You want to really get about two to three thousand milligrams of vitamin C, two to three grams of vitamin C. So you absolutely want to make sure that you're, you know, really understanding the importance of vitamin C in immunity. And Linus Pauling, two-time Nobel Prize winner, uh, went blue in the face explaining the importance of vitamin C. One of my all-time favorite products is Nucleo Immune. So the nucleomune, those are your nucleotides. When that virus infects the cell, it's breaking down the adenine, the thymine, the guanine, the cysteine. Uh, those are the nucleotides that make that DNA. And when those viral particles are invading the cell, that's what they're breaking down. So when I feel that first symptom coming on, I'm going to take about 10 to 12 the first hour. I'll take another 10 to 12 and another you know, six hours, and I'll go through this bottle of 60 capsules in two to three days. And this is one of the most researched nutrients that we have. Um, it's, it's backed by uh, the Swiss research over the last 15 years. Nucleotides as a special nanoprotein have been proven to be a spectacular help for the immune system, especially during the cold and winter season amazing stuff. So this is my first line of defense is uh, nucleoimmune. Also we got to understand the homeopathy. Homeopathy is phenomenal for uh, many many things but especially the flu because we got to deal with the energetics of these viruses. And so homeopathy, and so I have this quote from, from Gandhi, homeopathy cures a larger percentage of cases than any other method of treatment and is beyond all doubt safer, more economical, and the most complete medical science. Um, homeopathy is truly one of the most powerful allies that we have in our defense against these invading uh, viral particles. Homeopathy is a gentle, deep healing system of medicine founded by the visionary genius Samuel Henneman in the early 19th century. Uh, homeopathy uses healing substances so dilute that they do not cause side effects like conventional pharmaceutical drugs, which can suppress symptoms that can later reoccur, often on a much deeper level. So homeopathy cures from the inside out. It removes the underlying emotional or mental stress of chronic disease first, then moves the illness out of the body. Homeopathy does not cause side effects and enhances the quality of life as it heals. So I love homeopathy. And one of the first formulas that I love is this all flow. This all flow is made up of 10 all stars. And these all stars, uh, each remedy, homeopathic remedy, has a different symptom profile picture. This is kind of a combination of 10 of the most common flu remedies. So I'll usually take this 
pre-flu season, maybe a dose during the flu season, and this will kind of prevent the flu from even happening in the first place. But as soon as I feel that first sign of a flu, I'll usually reach for the all flu until I get a picture profile of what actual indicated remedy may be needed. So when we are looking for the profile of the case, we're going to go through the repertoire of all the different remedies we have. And so some of the most common questions we, we need to ask the patient is, you know, uh, where do you feel the flu? Is it in the respiratory system? Is it in the bones and the muscles? Is it in the digestive system? So we want to really pinpoint where the flu first attacked ourselves. We have to, we want to know what are the quality of the pain? Is it a burning sensation? Is it a, a acute sharp stitching type of pain with chills? Um, is the sickness accompanied by exhaustion and fatigue and lethargy? Um, and are the pains wandering? Uh, does our mood change? Do we become sad, depressed? Do we become angry? Do we need other people around us? So we want to get the whole picture so we can actually find the right indicated remedy. Um, and one of the great homeopathic remedies for the flu is aconite. And when you think aconite, you want to think fast and it's furious and it's fever. It's also associated with fright. It's like the storm coming in. All of a sudden you're out and it's a beautiful day and boom, that storm hits. It came out of nowhere. That's aconite. That storm just crept on us and it hit us like uh, we didn't even see it coming. So the child goes to bed feeling happy and, and no illness or anything. Then in the middle, middle of the night, the child wakes up screaming with fear and fever, and that's an aconite case. So aconite is great for those throat things, for the fever things, and it really is a great remedy to reach for if it fits the profile. Another great remedy is arsenicum. So some of the great homeopathic remedies come from the greatest poisons, such as arsenic. And this seems to go to the digestive system. So when you're, you're feeling, you know, the, the diarrhea, the nausea, the vomiting, uh, the, the horrible gastritis. So that's where the flu went into the stomach. Arsenic is a great remedy for that type of flu. It's also one of those remedies you should always have around for food poisoning, especially when traveling. Um, and we're going to, and going back to arsenic, the, the temperament of the arsenic patient, this is like the most uh, uh, of the hypochondriacs. They always feel like they're dying. That's one of the keynotes that we're going to look for in this remedy, that they're a little bit worse than what they are. So those are the hypochondriacs. When they get sick, they're dying. That's an arsenicum case. Uh, Baptisia. This is a real sick type of flu when, when all your your secretions, perspiration really stinks and the feces stinks and the urine stinks and your breath is horrid. This is a real sick type of flu with fever. And it's, this remedy isn't used too often in homeopathy, but when you see that real sick flu, you want to reach for baptisia. Uh, bryonia is the angry bear, and the key note with bryonia is they don't want to move. Worse with movement, and it has an affinity for the head colds, you know, with the bursting headaches, and any movement is worse, and especially when it goes into the head and into the muscular um, tissues, uh, the back and the neck, and you feel the pains there. It's also uh, amazing for the lungs when you have the stitching pains in the lungs. That could be a bryonia case. Um, remember, this is also a very bilious type of a remedy, and it's uh, the person's temperament, temperament is usually more on the angry side. Eupatorium, that's called bone set. This is a very small remedy, but it's very specific when you have that real bone ache, when that, when that flu goes into the bones, and that's your first keynote, my bones hurt. Then you think of eupatorium, aching in the bones like they're broken. Another great remedy is gelsemium. Gelsemium is one of the most famous of all the remedies in the flu and the influenza. 
and it was famous uh, in the Spanish uh, 1918 flu epidemic. That was one of the great remedies. Now, when you think gel it's your typical flu symptoms where you feel dull, you feel um, droopy, you feel your brain doesn't work, you just feel really tired and fatigued. And so you just, you can't do anything, you're just dull and tired. So it's the four D's, it's drowsy, doopy, dizzy, and dumb. That's the classic symptoms of gelsemium. And uh, really it's also a great remedy for fear too, especially fear of the dentist, fear of public speaking. So this gelsemium is one of my all-time favorite homeopathic remedies, but especially for the most common flu-like symptoms. Nux vomica, very similar to arsenicum. Um, the arsenicum is more the hypochondriac, the nux vomica is more the angry patient. And they both work on the gastrointestinal tract. And when you think nux vomica, think the quintessential hangover type of remedy. So when that flu is, you know, that nauseous and the diarrhea and the headache, think nux vomica. And it is also an amazing hangover remedy. And then a few other remedies. There's so many remedies. I'm only giving you my top remedies that I like to employ for the flu. Phosphorus is the, is the again, the quintessential uh, uh, laryngitis. You lose your voice, pre uh, preacher's voice, uh, where you can't talk. And that's one of the key notes with this phosphorus remedy. And it's usually people that are susceptible to the pneumonias and the more deeper lung afflictions think phosphorus. And mercury is one that is, uh, it's like uh, the thermometer. You're, you're one minute you're hot, one minute you're cold. It's, it's very uh, capricious in its changeability. And so mercury has such an affinity for the throat area, for the laryngitis, for the, the tonsillitis, um, and it may wander to the air and back to the throat because uh, it's very changeable. Um, so those are some of the, the homeopathic remedies that I really love to employ when we get sick. One of the first things that I like to do herbally is oregano oil. That's Carvacol. That is an amazing remedy and uh, Premier Research Labs has some of the best oregano oil. It is truly like as soon as you feel that scratch in your throat, you put a drop in your water and you start gargling with this all day, you will abort that thing right away. This this is, a, this is one of the most antimicrobial properties known to mankind. Um, love this one, and this is a good one to always start with as soon as you feel those throat-like symptoms. Um, another key strategy is, especially if you feel it in the muscles and the bones, you want to get heat. You want to be able to sweat this thing out, so you want to hit the infrared sauna. When you hit the infrared sauna, you're inducing fever, and that fever, that body temperature raises so it can kill the viruses and all the other pathogens. So we absolutely want to make sure that we're hitting the saunas, that we're sweating it out. So when you have that cold flu set in. You want to always be sweating. You always want the, the channels of organs of detoxification open to get things out and the skin is a great way of getting the toxins out. So that will take the stress off of the lungs, that will take the stress off the kidneys, that will take the stress off of the colon and the bowels. So absolutely want to hit the sauna, especially when it's in the muscles and the bones. Some other things that are amazing, you know, to even bump up the heat, you want to apply the oils, the essential oils. One of my favorite ones is the eucalyptus spray. Uh, this is an amazing oil. It's an essential oil. And you've got to be careful. You don't want to saturate yourself. A little goes a long way. So when you add heat and oil, that is a one-two punch. If you just use it without the heat, it's good. But oh my God, you take it to the next level when you add that heat element to the essential oils. And then there's other formulas. There's this, um, this sample recipe of eucalyptus, lavender, peppermint. Um, that's a good one. So you really want to look at all the essential oils for combating the flu, and there's quite a few of them that are amazing. 
This is the this is an essential flu oil balm. It's it's uh, it's lemon drop maluka uh, maluka, which is Australia. The oregano, uh, the thieves, and the frankincense. This combination has been proven to really wipe out the flu. So using your essential oils and using it with a heat source. So you actually want to make sure that you put, you know. Uh, the oils on, if it's in the chest, you put it on the chest and you put a hot pack on the chest or if it's on the kidneys, you make sure that you put it on the kidneys to get the detoxification going or you put it on the liver with the heat source. Um, and one of the keys is you always got to have those bowels moving and, and aloferox is actually probably the world's greatest remedy for constipation. Uh, natural constipation remedy. Aloe Farox is from South Africa. This plant not just moves the bowels like no tomorrow, it attacks viruses, fungus, and parasites. This is a, this has climbed the charts in my arsenal. It's in my top five remedies of all time. And I love it for so many uh, amazing reasons. Again, when you have that cell death, when you have accelerated cell death, your body has to get that stuff out. So making sure that the bowels are eliminating is so key to a full recovery and a quick, speedy recovery. Um, let's not forget about medicinal mushrooms. When we talk about immune in intelligence, you know, uh, the mushrooms, the medicinal mushrooms, the reishi, the shaga, the cordyceps, the lion's mane, uh, the shiitake, the mataki, the mushrooms add intelligence to your immune system. The phytochemistry in the mushrooms really have some of the most amazing properties to turn on your immune system. So it's not just that you have immune cells, but do you have aggressive immune cells? And that's why I love the fungi and the medicinal mushrooms for dealing with raising the bar and getting our immune system you know, to top speed. So those are some of the strategies that I employ when we have the seasonal flu. But again, building up your immune system so you never get sick in the first place is the real key. And so when we talk about the immune system, remember, 80% of that immune system is in your digestive system. And so those are some of the strategies that I employ for the flu. We have the herbals, we have the homeopathy, we have the essential oils, we have the heat, and let's not forget the importance of rest. There is no healing unless the body is healing. So when we're too stressed and we're too busy and we're, we're over, you know, we're burning the candle, that's when we start to break down. So we always have to make sure that we're getting our sleep. So if you do anything for your health, make sure you're sleeping. And again, thank you for watching and I hope my little presentation on the flu and influenza and seasonal colds, uh, that some of this was helpful in your quest to getting healthy. Again, thank you.